Just in Brazil, there are almost 1,700 species of birds alone. That's a lot of competition at lunchtime. You have to be really smart to get your own hunting area or some food that no one else has been able to eat. The pico tijera bird is smart. It really is unique. And originality calls for a lot of attention. Its hunting technique, tenderly cutting the water surface as if it was silk and scissors, could be an inspiration for many creative brains. The pico tijera is an exception, and its beak works in a novel way. Most birds have coincided in their design of an ideal fishing weapon. And when the majority follows the same solution, it usually means that this is the best option. A long and sharp beak at the end of a long and flexible neck is a magnificent spear. A spear so versatile that it could not escape the attention of another great fisher, one who's always on the watch to improve his own methods. Herons are very skillful lancers. Their tool is a simple dart, but their technique is very elaborate. It requires practice, skills, and experience, in addition to having great eyesight in order to see underwater and the ability to stay perfectly still. When herons locate their prey, they coil their neck and hold still, extremely still ready to spring with their backs to the sun in order to avoid blinding reflections and hoping their shadows don't reveal their position. That's the trick. Nowadays, similar fishing systems are imitated all over the world. But what these people have grasped best is how to benefit from their paradise in a sustainable way with no ambition or greed. Thinking of the future. Using spears, arrows, or knives is not limited to hunting. Personal protection or fighting with your own kind usually requires using cold steel. For instance, when choosing a mate. Some frivolous females of certain mammals choose their suitors just by their antlers or horns. This single detail represents strength and fitness to females. For males, their antlers are their insurance to transmit their genes. Undoubtedly, antlers are the herbivore's means of defense against carnivores. However, antlers are not usually used for that purpose. The best evidence of that is that females lack them. The shape of the antlers, special curves or specific designs, are meant for another type of battle. This female is in heat. A male goes after her, smelling her urine to make sure she's really receptive. But he's not the only one. Other suitors have noticed the sensual gazelle's movements and scent. Tension is high, and none of the males is convinced that it has the smallest antlers. A fight is inevitable. Most fights are short. A meeting of swords some shoves, and it's soon clear who the winner is. Though short, the skirmishes are constant, jealousy is high, and all of them want a part of the chromosome pie.
Serious wounds or deaths are rare during these fights. But to have to constantly defend your honor and your lady is exhausting. It depletes your forces, and a tired animal is an easy prey. Thus, although these fights are mostly ritual, they also are a risk. But the instinct to perpetuate the lineage is so strong that fighting is the lesser evil if any future kids are to bear your genes. This is natural selection. Strength, size, skill, and endurance are the factors that will identify the champion. The advantage of animal blades is that they're not designed to injure their rival. Their curves, texture, and branches are designed to get entangled in the rival's horns. They are the opposite of a sword or a dagger. Our copies are not as good as the originals of deer or gazelles. Something got lost in the process. It's possible we forgot their principles and their purpose and did not follow the rule that says noblesse oblige. 